people. In the past few months, I've been kind of getting more interested in wines. So you got red, white, sparkling, and dessert. Um, and I've just been really fascinated by the stories that are behind them and the history and the chemistry, naturally. Um, and there's properties that go with each kind of wine, like um, your viscosity or your tannin structure or the body. And something that I've always been interested in is the acidity. Um, you know, a lot of beverages, I think, are fairly acidic. And since wine is such like a, a nitpicky type of um, niche where people care a lot about the flavors and stuff, I thought it would be really interesting to maybe play with the acidity of wine, maybe remove it altogether, and just see what it tastes like. Because, um, well, I'm curious. So this will probably be a shorter video exploring the uh, small little facet of wine that I've been fascinated by. I'll give a brief tour of the uh, wine cellar. Um, I'm pretty proud of my fingerprint locked door handle there. Um, but this actually used to be a storage closet that I recently renovated all by myself um, into a, well, wine cellar. And um, I have storage for about 144 bottles here, plus a few um, boxes over there or crates. <clears throat> the uh, corner of shame of all my recent bottles. Uh, on the wall down here, I have four uh, one gallon carboys that are currently fermenting mead or honey wine because I find that that's a uh, lower threshold kind of wine to make. And then on this wall is glassware storage, of course, for drinking wine. Um, and I actually have a 250 milliliter um, Erlenmeyer flask there too. And I use that as a decanter for individual glasses of wine because I find that decanting the entire bottle of wine at a time is kind of a pain. Um, and what decanting is, is it's a common practice, especially for um, red wines, but also in white wines. Um, basically, it's when you see people kind of swirling their glass around. Oftentimes what they're doing is bringing oxygen to it. Um, and that kind of um, gets rid of the really high power uh, alcohol and tannin flavors. It softens them a little bit and it brings in um, a lot of nice aromatic um, flavors. Um, on this wall, I have uh, temperature and humidity monitoring. Um, as you can see, it's about 68 Fahrenheit, um, which is about as the maximum of what you want for uh, long-term wine storage. Um, and then of course, an S for science, uh, filled with corks. Um, and that is of course an S for also shame for all the wine that I'm drinking. And my wines, I have sorted by New World on top and Old World on the bottom. Um, and kind of what that means is you have like, New World is, you know, United States, Australia, um, South America. So I have the state of Georgia, the state of New Mexico, the state of Oregon, California. Um, you can see Arkansas down there. Um, Washington over here and then South America, which I believe I only have Chilean and Argentinian. Um, and then we go into old world. Oh, I'm sorry, Australia as well. Um, old world includes things like South Africa. I have an other section, which um, has Serbia and Romania. And then of course, Portugal, Spain, Germany, Italy, and then France is on the uh, bottom two rows. Kind of the, the anchor of the wine cellar, if you will. So I'm sitting on the floor in my wine cellar and I'll be drinking wine here, which wouldn't be the first time. Um, but I think I have everything I need. I have my single glass um, Erlenmeyer flask. I have my glass that I'll be using today. Um, I really like this type, this style. I think it's designed for Pinot Noir, but I really like it because I'm big on smells. Um, and I feel that this really like allows me to get as much of the aromas as, as possible, which is probably not as important in this video. Um, I have my corkscrew and then to, um, remove the acid, 
today I'll be using just standard baking soda, which is um, just sodium bicarbonate. Um, and this will react, of course, to produce um, CO2 and, and water. So, let's grab a wine. I grabbed one of my cheaper favorites. This is called um, Blackstone. I think it's a Californian. Uh, it's a Merlot. Um, it's like less than $10, but honestly, for what it is, um, I, I recommend it a lot because it drinks probably like a $20 wine. Um, so I think you get a good, you get a amount of money's worth on this one. Um, and I'm willing to sacrifice it for the sake of science. So now I get to open it on camera and showcase my wine opening skills, which I am not a sommelier. I don't know any sommeliers. My parents don't drink. My sister, I have one sister and does, who does not drink. So none of this is inherent to me. Even my wife doesn't drink. Not really. Perfect. So you'd think we'd pour right into the bottle, but you would be forgetting a step. We have to first pour it into our Erlenmeyer. Now I bought this Erlenmeyer online specifically for the purpose of um, decanting wine in it. Um, I would highly recommend Erlenmeyer. I would make sure it's newer glassware because I think older glassware might have lead in it and that's obviously not good. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. All it really takes in my opinion is a couple of shakes like that. And if you smell it, mm. How about that? There's actually some, it's a Merlot, but there's actually, after you shake it, it brings out some like effervescence or like fizziness to it. Um, I can see there's bubbles forming and kind of even hopping out of the glass, which um, I've seen actually quite a bit. And um, I don't know, it's kind of strange. So although I've had this wine quite a bit, um, I probably should establish a baseline of taste before I go any further. So I think I'll probably do this in multiple stages. I'll try it first at baseline, um, and then I'll add a tiny bit of baking soda and see if that changes the flavor at all. Um, and then I'll add a little bit more and a little bit more, um, and then eventually, hopefully, it'll have a lot in there and I'm super curious what that's what that's like. I don't know if it'll just like deflate the wine if that's a word um, but I mean this wine's aroma is very good it's it's like you're walking through a sawmill just so much just like oak and sweat and you know it's not as smooth as a nicer wine but flavor wise it tastes like oak and vanilla. I get blackberry, which is part of like kind of very jammy structure. Um, the acids are pretty medium, which I think is um, kind of what we want here. I don't want something that's too low of acidity. And the tannins are very like much like a Merlot in that I think they're kind of medium plus. Um, and in general, I think this viscosity is also medium plus as well. Yeah. So good, but I have to remember I have the rest of the bottle left. So that's fine. So what I expect is, as I pour it, to see like some, the bubbles forming, because that should be releasing CO2. Now actually, I do see that a little bit now that I'm looking at it. So I'll just try that amount. I can see actually when I swirl it, then there's bubbles that are kind of staying on the sides of the glass. That's pretty interesting. It doesn't smell any different, but... Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, 
definitely the acids are gone. Well, they're definitely weakened. Um, it still kind of has some acidity to it, and as, as I'm saying this, I'm watching it bubbling. Kind of like it's a sparkling wine now. Um, it almost like... It's almost like an aged wine. So as wines age, those like tannin flavors and acid flavors, they tend to be diminished a little bit. Um, and this honestly, I don't want to say it tastes more quality because um, I haven't had a lot of really old vintage wines, but it definitely is more on like the grape juice type of uh, feel here. So that's really weird. Not something I was expecting. I think it almost enhances the flavors, but I don't think it's necessarily better. All right, so now I'll add more. Again, this is arbitrary amount. This is all qualitative signs today. Um, nothing too fancy. Colors aren't really changing, and I wouldn't really expect them to unless there were some type of um, deprotonated species in there that's creating some kind of push-pull um, aromaticity that's creating some kind of strange color property, but... <sighs> okay. <coughs> okay. Um... Okay, so that's not good anymore. That's not remotely good. Um, now it's kind of in the same way I said that this wine tasted like uh, like a lumber mill. Um, now it's like it's like you took grape juice and poured it over a, a a piece of wood and you started chewing on the wood. It's just like definitely the acidity is it's it's more basic than acidic now, um, and it shows. It almost drinks like. I know seltzers are acidic, but it tastes like a seltzer in that it has like a fizziness to it and because of added um, all the sodium bicarbonate, but something about its flavor is just so flat. Um, maybe thinking more of a club soda. It's just kind of a flat bitterness that's um, not appealing at all. Um, yeah, the, the sharpness is gone and it's not a well-rounded wine anymore. So now, because I suffer so for entertainment, I'll add a bunch. And I fully expect this to be absolutely nasty. Very basic, super basic. In fact, there's actually, um, it's not all going to solution anymore. Um, it's not dissolving. So there's sodium bicarbonate building up on the bottom which means that effectively every acid in there will be neutralized at this point. It smells the same, which is actually surprising. And honestly, I don't know if you can see this. The, the, the color of the wine is actually, that's, that's weird. Okay, so the color of the wine is no longer red. It's actually brown. Um, I'm going to guess because I think the red color comes from anthocyanins in wine, like a polymer that's formed, and perhaps in the basic solutions then they become deprotonated or something. But oh, okay, it smells bad now. It smells almost like a, a rotten um, chocolate. It smells bad. It smells bad. Oh. <laughs> mm. <sighs> okay. <sighs> oh. Okay. Um you know how when you're a kid and you don't know what vanilla like pure vanilla tastes like and you think it's gonna taste good and you just jam it in your mouth and it's horrible. It's kinda like this. 
except the only flavors I'm getting is alcohol and like flour, like baking flour. Um, it's really gross. It's like medicine. It's, it's like something that was in your grandmother's medicine cabinet that you um, stole and as a kid you thought it was cool to drink. I don't know. It, it tastes horrible. Oh, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to drink that anymore. That's gonna ruin my. It's gonna ruin my perception of this wine, which I, I love dearly. Um, yeah, it, and it's weird. It's turned like dark brown or black. That's really weird. Mm. So yeah. Um, <laughs> that's gross. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I learned a lot. I'm never going to be doing this again. I'm always going to appreciate the acids in wine. Um, I'm going to hold them dearly. Um, and if you have any commentary on my cellar or my collection or any suggestions of other things I can do with wine, um, I, I'm just interested in this drink. So I think in the future I may try to do some more wine related videos. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, but thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time.